Welcome to Bruce Tracy Photography. Today I'm going to show you the three phone apps that I use to plan out taking a good Milky Way photograph. Now you're not just going to show up on site somewhere, find a great foreground that you like, like a mountain or a road or a cactus or something, and then just assume that the Milky Way is going to set right behind that any given night. No, you've got to plan first. You're going to need to use some very reliable phone apps to pre-plan your Milky Way photograph. I'm going to share with you the three phone apps that I use to help set up when I'm going to take it, what the sky is going to look like that night, what kind of a moon phase will I have, where will the Milky Way be on any given moment so that I can actually set up the angle of how that Milky Way is going to set up behind the foreground that I previously picked out. So come with me. Right now I'm going to transport myself into my cell phone and show you guys the three apps that I use. Transporting into my phone. Now that is some serious Star Trekian technology. I'm going to now show you the apps that I'm using on my phone that I use to plan a Milky Way photo shoot. So I'm going to go into my folder, which is just my photography apps. And the first thing I want to do is I am going to pick a location. Where do I want to take my photograph? And then I want to check my light pollution app to see if it's going to be a dark enough sky for me to use. So I'm going to click on my light pollution map here. That's going to open up the light pollution map. And I am going to then go onto the map to the location that I plan to take this photograph. Okay, there's a little campground behind the lake that I'm going to try to get to to take the photograph that I'm looking for. So it's right about here. Now I'm going to take the map and stretch it back down so that the light pollution comes on. And you will see it's color coded. The area that I'm looking to take my photograph is right there in the yellow area. If I hit the key, I'll find out that that yellow area represents a Bortle Class 4 sky, which is a very dark sky. That's going to work for what I want. Now, ideally, you'd like to get to a three or a two, but a, a four is going to work just fine for what I'm going to try to do here. So I've figured out where I'm going to go. I've scouted it out in advance. Now I've pulled it up in my light pollution map app, and I've seen that it's going to be a four Bortle class guy. That's going to work for me. After that, I go to my second step, which is I need to find out when will I have a new moon. And I'm going to use the Photo Pills app for that. So I open up Photo Pills and I'm going to hit Moon. For the photograph that I'm going to show you, I took that photograph on August 6th. So I'm going to go back here a little bit. Okay, this is August 6th. And you will see that the moon phase is right there at the top. It's a waning crescent and it's a 3.5% moon, which means it's going to be very dark. Perfect for what I want. Then, I can come down here and you can look at the various stages of where the galactic center visibility ends, which is 2.14 a.m. Keep scrolling down. And the galactic center visibility starts at 9.26 p.m. So I took this photo right around midnight and that's going to work out. I'll show you how that works in just a second when I want to show you where you have to line up your Milky Way core to get the photograph you're looking for. Okay, so I can see that I'm going to have a new moon. I can get out there at about midnight and I should have a perfectly dark sky and the Milky Way will be visible. Staying in photo pills. I'm then going to come up here to the planner. And it looks like my planner is still set to when I took this photograph. So at the bottom, you can scroll down here through your timeline. And what it does is it's going to show you when it gets dark. So here we're in the daytime. As I scroll later into the night, you can see it getting dark. And you've got a bunch of lines on your screen here. The yellow and the orange represent the, the path of the sun. The light blue and the dark blue represent the path of the moon. And that dotted line right there represents the Milky Way core. The light gray line there shows me when the Milky Way will start to be visible. The dark gray line shows me when it goes away. So now I'm going to scroll on the timeline at the bottom. And you will see the Milky Way, those dots represent the heart of the Milky Way as they scroll through the sky. So I can see exactly where that Milky Way is going to show up 
at any given time during the night. So scrolling through the timeline here at the bottom, I can now see exactly where the Milky Way is going to be at midnight. So I can see that it's exactly where I want it for the landscape that I have selected for that particular shot. Now the last app I'm going to use for my photo shoot is the Clear Outside app. I'm going to use this to see what kind of cloud cover I can expect at the location where I'm going to go shoot. So let's just say we were shooting today on the 14th. I would scroll here using the timeline at the top. The double zero there represents midnight and you'll see that there are no clouds that are going to be there at that site at midnight. You get a total cloud readout, low cloud, medium cloud, and high cloud. And for that particular time, there are zero clouds, which is exactly what you're looking at for this kind of photo shoot. You don't want any clouds to get in the way of your Milky Way photograph. Now that's it. Those are the three apps that I use to plan out a good Milky Way photograph. Let me go ahead now and transport back into my office. So there you go. Those are the three phone apps that I use to pre-plan my Milky Way photographs. What I want to do now is show you the photograph I took last weekend on a deserted road just a little under an hour north of where I live right here in Southern California. Mm -hmm.